recognizing that you have a great master of the idea is the first step in a particular process to becoming an entrepreneur. You must then create a vision. Find investors or companies and see this to operate your product or service to market. The success or failure of your brand idea is becoming an entrepreneur. However, while this is a basic framework to entrepreneurship, it is by no means the only way to get there. I am Penny Hawaii Sporter, and here on the Entrepreneur News, we highlight the unique stories that have laid the foundation for some of the most successful business leaders in Jamaica. <laughs> business would be and the opportunities that will exist there, well, our guest is the leader of the Future of Business Limited, current company to one of Jamaica's leading digital wallets, Link. Vernon James joins us today to discuss the success of Link and how he got here. Mr. Vernon James, welcome to the Entrepreneur News. Thank you for having me. First off, let's talk about the name, the name of business, what that. You know, uh, when we were naming Link, we had to come up with a name that was unique. I believe me, when you're naming a company in Jamaica, almost any name you can think of has already been taken. And given what the, the journey of Link was intended to be, uh, Link is the child, I would say, of um, the NCB Financial Group. And its mandate is to change the way average Jamaicans uh, do their business, especially their financial business. Uh, we decided that the best name was to, come, was to use a name that indicated what Link represented at its core and what we represent is the future of business. And I'll put 2021 limited year because that was a year that the company was incorporated. So that's how we came up with it. TFOB 2021 limited. The future, so we're now into the future. The future is now, right? Yeah. I like it. And up to this point, what are you most proud of? <laughs> you know what I'm most proud of? I have an amazing team working for me. Um, when I started out, it was uh, me and um, my CEO, it was just the two of us. Uh, why I was interested in the project that was me. The experiment, I would was, I was say, because it was a startup. I want to build everything from scratch, from uh, the staff, the structure, the compensation, the, the software. Uh, it's been an amazing journey. But my thing I'm most proud of is the talent that we have working for us. Everybody is committed to Team Link and the journey of it. And I do believe that the team I have will guarantee the success of Link, but also guarantee that Jamaicans will enjoy using them for years. As an entrepreneur myself, Vernon, I know that building a team is one of the most critical aspects of the yeah. business. Tell me about the dynamics because clearly, as you say, that's what, you know, when you're making a great movie and obviously making it. So tell me about the dynamics and, you know, the culture that you're trying to yeah. embody. So, I mean, in our executive, we have uh, four senior leaders. Um, I have, we have, I have a chief product officer, uh, and, and John Mattis in here, uh, and he's full of energy. The tech team, uh, the operations team, and the marketing team, they take their cue. And so, we have John as, as the, the chief product officer, uh, I like to call him the chief architect. Um, we have, I have an amazing um, technical, chief technical officer. Uh, who was formerly with NCD but decided to join the project. I uh, have a, a, an, an equally amazing uh, chief operating officer who ensures the lights stay on uh, and, and that we 
provided the, the customer service uh, that our customers are, uh, are expecting. And I have uh, an, an equally amazing chief go about the stuff, who is also full of energy. We have another set of amazing people that we acquired over the three years since we've launched. And uh, each of them encompasses what the spirit is of me. And, and, and that is something that I'm extraordinarily proud of because they get it. You know, Link is here to change Jamaica. And it's not easy. It sounds like a cliche, but that is exactly what we're here to do. And it's not an easy journey because what we're doing is for people who have always been using cash, used to use their cash, paying their cash, going into, you know, uh, paying their bills with cash, uh, you know, buying your groceries in cash. We're saying to those people, hey, we have a better way for you. Much more convenient than having to go to get cash. And, and we want you to, to move forward with the rest of Jamaica into the digital future. Mm -hmm. Hard sell, but we'll have the team to do. Right, so I'm going to tell you more on the part of itself, but let's get a bit on the team. So, you know, you talk about, you know, your driven and, and you're playing your different roles, but I want you to share more into their personality traits because I realize that sometimes as leaders, you know, as entrepreneurs, we want everybody to be like us sometimes, you know, and it's kind of unfair to have that same expectation. You are the, um, the father of the business, kind of, so to speak. So tell me a little bit about the, the personality style and makeup that's on your team. Um, all right, you know, I think I'm going to start with uh, the gentleman that came up with the idea for me in the I can't claim that I am that person. I will pass with the responsibility to guide it by that person. But the, the, real, the real leader or the real, the real person that drives, uh, I guess, the ethos that Link represents is my boss, um, our chairman, that is Patrick Hilton. Now, as you know, Patrick, he is indomitable. Uh, Patrick has been in the industry for decades, probably since the century, but in probably two minutes, uh, decades. And he has, you know, endured with the energy that we have taken and created with. So, from that energy, from my experiment, um, we, you know, the team I have is a mix, as I said. We have the, the ones that are um, less, uh, what's the word I would say now? We have the gatekeepers, as I said. These are the ones that protect our journey and protect our, our, our execution by ensuring that all of the risk management procedures are in place, all of the finances are in place. And, and, and we're going at a pace as fast as we expect to grow, but a pace that doesn't allow us to burn out and exhaust our resources. Um, those two, I would say, are our chief operating officer, that's Erica Anderson, and our chief technology officer, that's Andre Stewart. And as I said, so they are, they are energetic, they know the journey, and, and they are as key to the success of the journey as as the rest of us, um, but they keep us grounded. Then, as I say, yeah, the energizers, the people who are always dreaming, always up and about, always moving, always trying to create the next opportunity for our customers. Uh, and those are um, our CTO, that's John Matthew Sinclair, and our chief growth officer, as Denise Williams. So the dynamic is you have those that like the three of us are the dreamers that we want to do it all. And then we have the realists that say we're going to do it all, but we can't do it all at once. So one of my things that I always say to my team is that I want it all and I want it now to borrow from the song. Um, I do. Uh, but, um, you know, they bring the realism which allows us to execute sufficiently. <laughs> Managing your company's finances remotely is now more important than ever. With Scotia Online for Business, you can safely and quickly conduct your transactions and save on costs. Accept payments, transfer funds including third-party and wire transfers, view balances and download statements, pay bills and credit cards, make supplier payments, 
manage payroll, and purchase foreign exchange. Let us handle the way your business does business. Speak with a Scotia representative today. Call 888-429-5087 or email bnsj.businessbanking at scotiabank.com. As a business owner, we encourage you to have a structured approach around sales and operating expenses. Analyze month after month what can be done better in order to improve your revenue and decrease expenses. So that's a good question. Um, given what we want to achieve on a short space of time, we have to achieve it. So here's the equation we have to work with. We have, as any other business does, limited resources. Um, financial resources, uh, human resources. And so, but we have a lot to achieve in a short space of time because we have to achieve success within those limitations. I think one of the things is you have to have a very motivated team and they have to buy into the vision. That gives them much more energy. If you have a team that doesn't believe in where you're going, uh, you're, you're A, going to be very slow in the execution. And in many ways, you're going to have more issues with that execution. So you need to have the team buy. So that's one way that we manage it. Uh, we, we make sure that the team understands where we're going and they believe in the direction. The next thing is that they have to believe that they're treated fairly and, and, and they are compensated fairly for the effort that they're putting in. So you have to make sure that you have you know, a good compensation, compensation structure uh, that they also believe. The other thing is that you have to allow people to anybody at any level to make a contribution. In other words, if we're in a direction and it doesn't matter how junior the staff, they believe that you know, there are ways we can improve how we're going or we're doing something wrong, they must have a voice. Everybody in me has a voice, we have a flat structure. And they don't have to come to me and say, we spray my ear and say, boy, I think you're going in the wrong way. We have different ways that they can communicate. And so if, if, if people believe that they have a voice in the direction that you're going, then you get their engagement. Um, but we also have to watch the bottom line. In other words, our mission is to execute our features, our marketing and so on, at the lowest cost um, per, uh, per dollar of, of, of Execution. So when you look at our marketing cost, for example, we have to choose the right channels. Uh, the channels that allow us to be viral very quickly uh, and to get that output or that engagement from the customer without having to break the bank. So it, it's quite an equation to manage. It is probably driven by the resources that you have. Uh, we can only build as fast as our finances allow us and our, um, our staff allow us to do. Uh, but we have to ensure that we launch the features quickly enough you know, so that we get value out of it, uh, so that we don't have that kind of cash burn. In the business. But technology business are very expensive to run. Building technology is not cheap. But we have to do it in the most efficient way. And, and that's how I kind of balance the business. You know, you have to look at the financial, you have to look at the human resources. You have to ensure they're engaged. You have to ensure that we're delivering the right features. And you have to do it within those constraints. So, from in front to painting, how did you get there? What is that? Good question. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we're, uh, uh, in 2020, NCD sold its insurance portfolio for an insurance company that was a CEO, the Guardian Life. And, you know, 
Um, I was proud of my tenure. I was eight years as a CEO for Anthony Insurance. I did wonderful things. And I was looking for the next challenge. So, you know, I was saying, oh, you know, I'm going to see what is out there for Vernon. And I had all intentions at the time to, to leave um, the interview. And when I told my boss, he said, laugh, and I said, no, no, Vernon, we have another challenge for you. And then I told her what it was. I said, go ahead. A tech company, I am not a tech meeting. I am a low impact user of my cell phone. So I'm not a, I, I, I'm not a technology native. But I said, yeah, but this is more about change. Uh, I will as much about change as it is technology. I thought about it for a while and I said, why not? I never run a startup. I've always been attached to very well established, very profitable company. And I thought that it was a challenge worth taking just from my own experience. And the fact that I thought that the technology is digital. Any way you look at it, where I look all around, I see technology transforming every aspect of business. Every sort of company is trying to become a technology company. Even, a, even banks are trying to become software companies. So I thought, well, if I can join, if I can lead a new startup with the support of MCD, what do I have to lose? And it would be an awesome journey. So I said, why not? And that's how I ended up at Tio for me. Interesting. And you spoke of change earlier. So on that same trajectory, what did you make it? I get excited about the future. So, the future of business is not just NCP, it's, it's my future. Too. When I look and see how things are changing in the landscape, and, and I see, you know, what potential there is. Jamaica is an untapped resource. Um, when you look across the world, many of the developing nations are already um, heavily advanced in their digital transformation. But we're still very early. The majority of people um, still, you know, receive, for example, the remittances in, in cash by standing up in a line at one of the remittance companies. And I'm saying, geez, when you look across the world, where does that happen now? Uh, people are getting their money. You know, in Africa, people are, are getting their money to their phones, they're doing their business. And I thought, you know, what an exciting journey to be on. And I, I said, it must be uh, that, you know, given what has happened, this is my opportunity to drive change. And I want to be a change driver. And uh, I want to look back at this aspect of my career and say, you know, we changed Jamaica. Not just me, every member of my team, but we did it. And I, every day I get up, that's what motivates me. And the thing is, you see the whole, it's a long journey of change. So be motivated every day to get up and continue to drive that change. It's not always easy because from where we are now to where we need to get to is like an ocean. But if you keep looking at where we need to get to, which is where you and everybody um, is engaging, uh, you know, your financial services, holistically through a digital wallet, not necessarily link, we want it to be linked, but not necessarily linked. Um, that's an awesome destination. So, that's what motivates me. Destination, but the journey to get there is also um, quite, quite exciting. And he is the journey into the world. Mm -hmm. Alright, so, everything rises and falls with leadership. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's not an easy road, I know that. It's not an easy road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you enjoy most about running a company? Uh, let's see. What do I enjoy most? I like to see, I get real joy from seeing when my team members uh, have that eureka moment. So, we have various challenges and what I like to see is like when every, any one of the team members, from not just my executive team, the team below that and the team below them, 
I like to see their Eureka moments, and I get to see that every single day. Every day there is something to solve. We went to the last of the we had zero things to solve. One thing I can tell you when you launch a feature, it almost never goes to how you plan, you always find surprises. Uh, and then those create opportunities to problem solve, and solutions come from everybody. Uh, in our case, in the remittance case, what I look here, and the solution came from somebody that wasn't an executive, uh, but, you know, one of the key members below. That I get a lot of joy from, because through that process, they are empowered, and they feel that they have contributed, and I get a lot of joy from that. That is, I think, what I get the greatest joy in leadership from. Um, empowering, creating an environment where people feel empowered to succeed and to dream and to problem solve. That's my greatest joy. Awesome. Pick a thing. We'll continue this discussion right after we take a look at what's trending. <laughs> So we all know of human intelligence because we were born to apply it. Well, the future they have been saying is AI artificial intelligence and the latest open AI's chat GPT. What is this? Well, it's an AI driven web application that allows for human like conversations with a chat box. You can ask anything. Chat GPT will generate the best responses after scanning the entire web. This makes compiling essays, email, doing your grocery list, and yes, coding as simple as just saying it. The AI behind Chat GPT, it seems, is always learning to ensure accuracy and consistency. So who knows? Chat GPT could be the next Google. Only time will tell how far this competition will go. Accept it or not. If you ask Chat GPT, it will tell you it's trending. That was what's trending in business. that was linked three years ago, and then we launched a company that was, that's the CFOB um, in 2021. We launched it as I said to transform the way that people pay. The link, I would say, that exists, um, that, that could exist with Pesco, but not beyond Pesco. Any company that um, takes a lot of their, their, their payment in cash is that link can help to drive down that cost um, by allowing people to move away from cash and to pay it digitally. But companies, you know, like Pesco and other cash-intensive companies, that shift is likely to be transformational, uh, not just to their bottom line, but to their customer service and to the speed of which they transact, the customer transact their business. So, so I think that is the link. The link is we improve um, the customer experience for their customers. We improve the speed at which those customers uh, transact their business. And, and we improve their bottom line as a result of those two. So, so that's what link represents to most, if not all, merchants. That sort of transformative um, element uh, that moves your customers from cash to digital payment. Mm -hmm. So Jamaica is very natural skeptic, right? Yeah. It comes on to digital and of course we know and COVID nineteen did reveal how much of a digital divide there is. Yeah. So what's the plan to kind of close that gap, you know? And um, yeah, what what's the plan? To change Jamaica <laughs> one customer that time. Mm -hmm. Link link the back. Forgive my 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 shameless plug here, <laughs> um, but link link to that. What we try to do is to uh, to make it easier for people to receive their funds uh, the way they receive their funds, whether it's through remittances or like your payments and so on. 
We want them to receive their funds digitally, which is an easier way. And we want to immediately allow them, as they receive their funds, to use the funds the way they want. Whether they want to go and buy a party, or they want to go and, um, and, and pay a friend, uh, you know, or, you know, eventually perhaps even, you know, if they want to make a, 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 a contribution to their church. Um, we want to cover that entire journey. So from the receiving side to the payment side, we want to tie that into an ecosystem. What that means is that we need to get as many merchants as people use, from small, medium to large, uh, as many of them on our platform as possible, so that we have a living, breathing ecosystem of merchants and customers all happily uh, transacting with each other in a seamless, very cost efficient way. Um, so that's the journey of it. It requires acquiring every customer, one customer at a time, and that's the maker. Um, eventually, you get to a, a point of virality where one customer tells another and tells another, and then you have scale and it starts to hold geometrically. But we have to do that on both sides, on the customer side and on the merchant side. And if we do so, and we convince just one customer and then another customer, uh, eventually we reach that point where um, there's a, a, a good quorum of customers, I would say, that start to tell their friends and so on and we still. That's how change happens. What we realize in Jamaica, it happens with just one customer at a time. But once you get there, then it feels very quickly. Mm -hmm. So do you have a time in mind in terms of when you think we get to that level of reality before this? Good question. So right now we're at a 205,000 customers in two years since launch, three years since concept. Mm -hmm. and, and that is uh, an amazing achievement. Um, we have over 5,000 merchants on our app. But we believe that we have so much potential to do so much more. Um, I would say within the next two to three years, we need to be beyond 500,000 active customers. That is, people who are using the app daily for their lives, that is, paying a taxi. Or, as I say, the supermarket and vendors, we want them to be so unique. Uh, so, it's, a, it's, it's quite a journey, but I believe we'll get there. We'll have a good start, and uh, with the features that we've launched, and the features that we'll have coming, um, we, I think within the next two years, we should be beyond 500,000 active customers and all that. All right, so speak to that entrepreneur who has just launched a business and perhaps thinking to themselves right now. How does it all make sense to me? How does it work for me? Convince a customer right now to buy into me. Well, uh, so the, for the merchant that is coming on now, I would say that what um, what Link can offer you, we already have merchants and we already have customers. So by joining Link, you're already joining an ecosystem of customers that you can sell to. And you can sell to in a channel that is cheap and immediate. And you don't have to deal with the management of cash and, and those sort of attendance issues. So um, utilize us for what we represent, which is an ecosystem that you can potentially sell to. And, and, and I think that is the advantage that we have. Um, you know, within Link, as I said, we connect merchants and customers in a serious way. And, um, and, and we indicate uh, to our customer base who are link merchants so that they can have a confidence to do business with those merchants. So I think that is the selling point. The selling point is that you know, by joining us, you're not starting from scratch. You have a partnership that can help you grow and, and we will help you grow. Uh, you know, we have no problem promoting our merchant partners. You know, we will help you grow so that your success is our success. That's our main selling point. And we know that the digital economy is one of the fastest growing economies globally. How important is it for the nation to come on board quickly? Why is it necessary for them to do that? Well, the digital economy is really what connects the world now. Um, the, 
the speed of commerce has improved uh, many times over over the last decade. You know, when the barriers for the transfer of value have um, fallen as they have, uh, you know, you can conduct business with people in Hong Kong if you want to immediately. So, what the digital economy, the global digital economy allows is speed and access. Access to um, you know, businesses across the world. These businesses might be you know, input factors that you need to produce your product that you sell, or it could be people that you sell to. And, 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 and so, if you don't get on board in the digital economy, you can't survive. The, the whole world relies on that digital economy and the future of business, the, the yeah. present of business, <laughs> the present state of business means that you have to get your product in front of as many customers as possible. And uh, the best way to do this is through digital media. So, um, you have to get on board with digital. No business that is not digital. I would go as far as, you know, normal businesses. Um, will survive in the long term without that digital solution. Um, as you know, the, 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 the target customer gets younger and younger. The, uh, the, those customers, those potential future customers, are likely only to the business digitally. All types of business. So you have to get on board to save the other people that you're You know, somebody's working right now. They remember the day when WhatsApp and everything went down. And you know, some of the things that you know, no, no, no. These are like person who is kind of reticent right now. You know, like what, what do you have as a backup plan in the event that you have to get to this variety? But guess what? Things are working out. Technology, like you're down for a day or two. Um, talk to us about that. Well, uh, let me speak to the event because that affected me too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in all the years I've been using WhatsApp. I only remember it going down that one time. It would be a challenge to find any of the traditional methods of doing business that have that kind of track record of, of being up. So just relatively speaking, digital channels offer a more consistent uh, experiences um, than traditional channels. So, so, so you, have a, you already have a leg up with the digital channel. Um, as for, you know, about, you know, why you should have confidence in the digital channel. I mean, listen, uh, the, 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 the software developers and so on have, because of the environment we're in, uh, and have been in for the last 20 years or so, have put a lot of effort and energy into securing your interaction digitally. So just like NTBP, which is a recently launched, um, product of NCD that allows you to digitize your current cards and put it into the NCDP app and use them by just tapping at the point of sale machine. These things have a higher security than um, what you're used to before uh, because they're tokenized. So, 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 you know, some of the things that you see happening, uh, for example, when you, when, you, when you go to an ATM and you use Link, you don't put in a card. Um, it is cardless. And, and the, the, the ABM communicates with your phone um, to facilitate the, 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 the transfer and for the, the, the phones to, to come to you through the ABM. You know, these are transactions that I think are the next generation of financial transactions um, that allow more security because they don't use physical means anymore of transacting the business. So you should have more confidence in these sorts of channels because they're improving what was done before and they're creating less avenues um, you know, for people to intercept your transaction and, 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 and create some sort of fraudulent activity. So, so as I said, the future is digital. It's more secure, goes down less, so you should have more confidence um, using the digital channel to be your business. So we're 10 years into the future, we're in 2033, yeah, I'm not going to do it, we're in 2033, paint a picture of what the digital world looks like. Oh boy. Yes. <laughs> oh boy, that's amazing. The digital world looks like. Uh, well, 
I mean, I, I mean assuming that phone exists, and you know what phone they're going to be in 2033. Uh, for one, I think all transactions are instant. And I think some of the things, some of the pain points that you have now, for example, if you're going to buy a car or you're going to take a mortgage, you know that very manual process. By 2033, I believe that if you, if you, if you want to, for example, purchase a house, you go, you see. I believe that end-to-end process is, is probably almost immediate. So what I see is the speed of transacting improving uh, almost exponentially uh, to the point that um, you know everything in terms of, of the transfer of value is immediate, which means that the volume of transactions uh, will likely increase and 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 um, you know have a positive impact on the businesses that exist in that space. I don't know, maybe by then we don't have cars driving on the road anymore and, and you know, cars will be flying. I, I have no idea. It seems that we're going in that sort of direction. But I think um, the future as it relates to technology uh, is, is quite exciting. The future as it relates to business is quite exciting. But what I will say is that I believe that um, at that point in time, to be employed will require a re-tooling and, and a re-skilling of the society to be able to offer um, the, the sort of technological uh, lift that the world will require at that point in time. And I see that happening now with artificial intelligence coming into play and so on. Uh, I, I see that the, the skill level um, that will be required to be productive in that sort of environment will be higher uh, than it is now. So it's a whole exciting world, but I would say that you have to, to remain relevant. You have to, you, the, the general person would have to upskill significantly. Linking the digital divide and stepping into the future. When we come back, what's next for Vernon James and Link? Stay with us. It's now time for our smart powered by JTS. Get smart strips. Check out those appliances that still have a light on even when they are turned off. It means they are still using electricity. Plug these appliances into smart power strips and save money. Smart power strips cut off phantom power when any device is off and, yes, helps you to conserve energy. That was our Spark powered by JPS. We can't be sure of what tomorrow will look like. But when we put in the work, we can shape it. We can light the way and build our own path to make tomorrow even brighter. Because one thing's for certain, tomorrow will come. That's why we're investing in world-class technology, building new plants and upgrading our systems. We know that the best hope for our children and their children is the work we do now to create the innovative, cutting-edge, clean Jamaica of the future. A Jamaica that works for Jamaicans. A Jamaica powered by hope. Today, tomorrow, forever. Welcome back to the Entrepreneur Review with me, Annika watkins Sporting. What's the next big thing on the agenda for you and me? Oh, well, I, I think so. So, uh, in the immediate future, we have our LinkedIn platform. Our LinkedIn opens up e commerce to all of them. Uh, you know, uh, you'll be able to. What it really is, is to allow merchants, um, or medium and large, uh, to be able to come on our platform and um, allow our customers to transact business with them. Uh, you know, so we're, we're, we're very excited about that because normal Jamaicans don't have access to, you know, being able to go and buy online, you know, order from any other food delivery companies and so on, order goods online. A link will open up that portal today. 
and, and, and we're happy about that. But it also allows for, you know, merchants, like you mentioned, Pesca and so on, for customers to be able to go to these merchants and through a QR scan, be able to make payments. QR scanning is, I think, um, another of the evolutions of payments. And, and we already have a number of merchants that are low. You can go to you know, any of these merchants and you can scan and pay. Uh, but you know, with link bills, we're going to expand that exponentially. You'd have seen the government launch an incentive, a Jamdex incentive, um, that is $25,000 for the first 10,000 merchants that um, open a Jamdex account and transact five transactions or more. And if they do that and they're part of the first 10,000, they get $25,000. So that's an incentive to get people to come on. And we are one of the platforms, one of the only platforms that allow these merchants to come on and transact. So we're inviting merchants, come on. Um, we'll be launching our LinkedIn platform shortly. I think April 1st is when the incentive from the government comes into effect. We want you guys to come on, join Link or Link Nation and benefit from the Link community. Uh, you will benefit from, you know, if you're part of the first 10,000, the Jamdex incentive. Um, but there's more than that. You will also benefit from the 205,000 customers that we have. So, so that's the immediate next feature. But we have some very exciting things that are coming that will unlock even more uh, functionality for the consumers. So, um, as John always says, and I will quote him, so watch this space. We have a lot of exciting things to come. larger, you get more value for your money, and it's, it's a better quality product. So the product that I have, I have natural bar soap, natural face wash or liquid soap, I have sugar scrubs, and I have a herbal infused oil. So I have six different types of bar soaps right now, two different types of face washes, I have four different types of sugar scrubs, and I have one type of herbal oil. Well, you can find it in all Fontana locations island-wide. Um, we are also in Cato Room Box, that's in Barbican. We're looking to get into more stores. Um, and of course, we're online. So you can find us on Instagram at shop ALT Skincare. <laughs> everyone. I want to mean everyone, everyone. From the vendor who sells uh, yam and potato, uh, you know, instead of having a uh, a marketplace of you know, people coming to you in a market. Why not open up your business to you know uh, the, 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 the digital ecosystem of millions, perhaps or hundreds of thousands in Jamaica that can see a good and purchase. What digital represents is skill. You know, if you have a good, instead of having three people see, you can have a hundred thousand people see one time. It must expand your business. Because you have more people seeing it. So it's for everyone. Um, and it's not as hard. People think, oh, it's too hard. How am I going to do this? It's not that hard. Um, companies like Link have made it easier to, like, or link this platform. But it's not as hard as you think to set up a digital business and to benefit from the e commerce rails that a digital business um, may offer. You also benefit from, for example, more secure payments. Uh, rather than cash payments. So it, it, it's all inclusive. It excludes no one. 
the digital economy and the digital society is the future of business. And you need to be a part of it if you want your business to thrive. What I would say. Every skills. How do you want to be remembered? You know, what impact, what legacy do you want to be known for? Do you to have? As it relates to this business, I want to be remembered uh, as the CEO um, that changed uh, the way the, a large number of Jamaicans did their business. I want to be remembered for the fact that you know people have a much better experience doing their business in Jamaica because of what they're doing. Uh, you know, and I think that's what I would want my legacy. Uh, to be for, for, for my current position with it. Awesome. I'm sure you inspired a young Jamaican, a young entrepreneur who was on that edge of decision making. So thank you. Thank you for spending time with me, and I wish you all the best on your online journey, as well as everything you do with your team, all of you at the link. Big up on yourself. <laughs> thank you so much. you that on your entrepreneurial journey, it's so important for you to seek out mentorship and coaching. There are several coaches and mentors available. Of course, if you need my service, I'm available too. You can contact me at tenicawatsisforte.com or on social media, wherever you find your information. I am there. But you don't have to only seek me out. There are so many other coaches and mentors that are available. And there are coaches too that will mentor you for a charge. So it's so important, don't discount the value of learning from others who have gone there before, learning from those who can provide the practices that are necessary to take you to your next level. That way, you can avoid all the mistakes, all the mistakes. A big thank you to all our sponsors, JPS, JCIS, Music Media, Hope Royal Botanic Garden, celebrating 150 years of beautifying Jamaica, Scotia Bank, Madison Chai, Max's Department Stores, and Sweetness and Things. <laughs>